welcome to the What to Read Next podcast. In this podcast, your host, Lori and me, will invite a bookish guest to share their favorite book recommendation. If you share a passion for books and always looking for your next read, then join us. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Becca. Welcome to What to Read Next podcast. Hello. Hi. Thanks for having us. So happy to have you both here. So, Becca, you've been on the show, but Rachel is brand new to the show. So why don't you just go ahead and introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself, and tell us a little bit about Consensual Podcast. Absolutely. Yeah. I Well, I am, uh, I am Becca Morgan. So I am one of the authors of season two of Consensual, which is Hookup State of Mind. Uh, and then Rachel, I'll let you introduce yourself. <laughs> Yeah, uh, my name is Rachel Borgo. I am the series director of Consensual, just just a fancy way of saying that I direct the audio series. Um, I also have a hand in editing the novella. Um, I, uh, as a working professional, am a freelancer um, for uh, a a writer, essentially. (laughs) Um, I, uh, ghostwrite novels. I write screenplays and, um, plays, and I also do some professional writing as well. I love this. So I really want to talk more about your job on Rachel, but first let's talk about consensual. Becca, tell us like, what did this, what made you start the podcast and like, what should we expect from it? You know, for those who haven't listened to our previous episode. Of course. So consensual started because uh, both Rachel and I are uh, ghostwriters in the romance industry. Um, and as we were writing romance novels, we saw some things that we didn't we didn't really like so much. We didn't see the kind of explicit consent that we wanted to see in the romance mm-hmm. industry. And we also just felt like some of these characters, it was like the authors were a little bit out of touch. The example I always give is... When I, why are we in a city? Somebody's like living in Manhattan and driving their car everywhere. And I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> no, like, no. Right? Or like we're living in Chicago and it's like, I drive over and I find part, you know, I park right next to her building. And I'm like, what? No, you don't. Like it's impossible. It's impossible. Right. I'm like, I don't believe this. Or people like being like, I called a cab. And I'm like, who's called a cab? in five years. No, you call an Uber. And that's, I mean, that's just a side effect of the fact that, you know, not a lot of romance writers are, you know, generally when people get romance book deals or really are able to start doing that work, they're either they're in their twenties and they're very, very privileged or they're a little bit later in their career. So we wanted to create romance for readers like us and readers like us are also not necessarily readers. We're listeners. I'm a huge audiobook person. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, I wanted it to be, to be more accessible than that. Um, so we're available entirely for free on Spotify, Apple podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, because at one point, you know, Rachel and I wanted to be listening to these audiobooks because we have to, we have to listen to romance to be writing romance or read romance to be writing romance. But I'm not made of money. I can't be buying romance novels every, you know, every month. I don't have that kind of money. So it's accessible. It's consent based. It's it's romance for people who might not think of themselves as romance readers. I love this. And so, Rachel, what is the experience like to direct a series? Like, how does that work? You know, <laughs> uh, it's so much fun. Just to start off saying that, um, I enjoy it so very much. It uh, was a very different experience for me uh, between the previous year, our first season of a 10-week turnabout, and Mm -hmm. the second season, which um, unfortunately, we began recording during the pandemic. So Mm -hmm. uh, I say unfortunately, but there was actually a lot of good things that came out of it. instead of having everybody in the same room as we did for a 10 week turnabout um, and having that sort of like fun familial element and uh, shooting the shit and just like having a great time recording together, it was very much so one-on-one. Like I was on Zoom calls or Google Hangout or FaceTime, whatever whatever the actor preferred with individual actors. And uh, that gave me an opportunity to spend a lot more time with people as individuals and, spend more time working on their characters and discussing the characters and um, finding those little nuances. And it was a blast. Uh, Again, very different from the first year, but uh, 
I, I really enjoyed it. And I feel like the actors really got a lot out of it as well. And uh, we created a really, I think, wonderful product. Listening to the podcast now is just a dream because I, I hear all these, these moments where I remember saying like, that was it. That was the take. Good job. Like to the actor. And it, it's in the, it's in the podcast now. And uh, it feels really good to have a, a part in that. I love this. So what is it like to write for the podcast and then write a novella? Because they're different styles, I'm assuming, because this is a full cast audio. So yeah. So hook up state of both 10 week turnabout and hookup state of mind. We um we've kind of developed a process because we are uh, no, uh well. I don't have a ton of familiarity with script writing. Mm-hmm. Rachel, on the other hand, has a lot of familiarity with script writing. She's written movies. She's a rock star. Oh my God. <laughs> but um, so for both of these books, we wrote a novella first and you can purchase the novella as an ebook, both Ten We Turn About and Hook Up State of Mind. Um, but then Rachel takes it, takes the novella and turns it magically like some kind of wizard into a script. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's so interesting because things will change from the novella version to the script version, just because, you know, the, he says, and she says, or, um, the dialogue will just be broken up a little bit different. So then we get to go back to the novella afterwards and make it match the script version. And it also, it means that the novella gets more and more rounds of edits because as Rachel works with it, she realizes, wait a second, this doesn't sound quite right. Or hmm, I'm not sure, you know, it get, allows us to really dive in and perfect that story before it goes live. I love this. And so let's talk about ghostwriting. So you both are ghostwriters. So how did you end up doing that? You know? Uh, Well, both of us uh, were referred. um, And that's really the best way you can get a ghostwriting job because no one is, no authors are out there like posting on Indeed, Mm -hmm. like looking for a ghostwriter. There's something sort of like taboo about it, uh, which is silly because it is a legitimate profession. Um, But yeah, we both got our, our, our ghostwriting gigs through um, referrals and um, have both of us started around the same time. So we've both been ghostwriting for about three and a half years now. That's great. And so let's chat about Hookup State of Mind. So tell us about the story and why she was in Jerry. Yeah. So Hookup State of Mind is the it stars Cleo, who is a secondary character in season one, 10 week turnabout. And Cleo is a plus size actress. And she is, she speaks her mind. She is very body positive, sex positive will, you know, shoots from the hip and, uh, says everything that she thinks. Um, and she books a mini series in Niagara falls and, uh, flies out there, leaves her nanny and gig behind for a couple weeks to go film this series and then matches with a handsome guy who she keeps running into, uh, in the hotel, Mm -hmm. who's there for a conference, um, and thinks that this will be nothing more than a hookup to keep her occupied for the week, uh, during a stressful week of filming. And it turns out to be much more in a couple different ways. I won't spoil the twist because although I guess the twist is spoiled in the Amazon, uh, blurb, if you do read the ebook, but there is a twist. And I thought that the twist was obvious at when I was writing it. And then everybody I was talking to as they listened to the podcast or read the book said that they totally didn't see it coming. So That's did you such see a compliment. it? That's right. Such a compliment. I yeah. know. Laura, did you see it coming? Yeah. No, you didn't. <laughs> and okay. A lot of and I'm like, this is unique. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, Ooh, what unique. a huge compliment. Wow. Cause I, right. It's so hard as the writer, right. I see all of the, you know, all of the clues and the evidence leading up to the twist. So I'm like, ah, oh, yes, the writing's on the wall, but um, I'm really happy that it was a surprise for other people. <laughs> I think that just adds a little pizzazz to the, to the podcast experience and even to the novel experience. So I like it. <laughs> hey, I'm glad. I and- love this. So what was the process of writing or just recording? You mentioned a little bit of recording the pandemic. Like, um, you know, is there anything different that happened, you know, that you wish you were like, you know, compared to season one, you're like, oh, we would like to bring it back after the pandemic or there are things that you're like, you know, this is great working environment. We can keep doing this this way. 
I think that both models, like what we did for season one and season two, I think they're both sustainable and it would be, I think, really wonderful for us to be able to mesh those two models and use it for season three and beyond. Because something that I did miss terribly from season one is that the first rehearsal that we had uh, was a table read. And so we brought in all of the actors, which can you even imagine like having 10 people in the same like small apartment? <laughs> ah, exciting. <laughs> but at that time that was like, chill and cool. So we brought in all of the actors and sat on the floor in a circle. Everybody had their scripts and we read through, I want to say all of the novella. So it was like a hefty, like four hour table read. Um, we had pizza. It was just, it felt very uh, communal and mm -hmm. um, collaborative. So this, this, this season has been different, but we also are more of like a well-oiled machine now. Mm -hmm. uh, I work with the, the sound engineer very closely and his, in, our, our rapport has just, just definitely improved. And I think Becca could agree to that. Um, we just, we kind of are on the same page now um, in terms of like, I don't know, I don't know much about sound engineering, right? So I've learned much from him in terms of like what mixing is, what mastering is. And so I think, I think that as a whole, like the machine of consensual has improved. And I think that we did a really great job with the individual recording sessions, like one per actor with season two. Um, but I am looking forward to in the future when it's safe again, having everybody together once again, in order to do that sort of table read and, um, have that kind of theater feel because Becca and I both have backgrounds in theater and uh, that, that that matters to us. So I've got a question. How do you two meet? Like, did you, how did you connect it? Okay. I, ha I have to talk about this because this yeah. is one of my favorite things to talk about. So Rachel and I went to college together and we were, we were both creative writing majors and we were both involved in theater. Rachel was a double major in theater. I was a theater minor. So we were in some of the same classes and just ran in some of the same circles. And I wanted to be Rachel's friend so bad. <laughs> like, Oh my God. I thought she was so cool and she was so funny. And I just, Oh my God. Like I remember getting coffee together maybe once like end of freshman year, but that it just like, I don't know. It just didn't, it just didn't really happen. We were in a couple of shows together and we had some mutual friends, but it just never, it just never quite happened. And, um, then we both, you know, we both ended up ghostwriting. We got a little bit, you know, a little bit closer senior year maybe, but we both ended up ghostwriting and I, and we had commiserated a little bit on some of the things in the romance industry that we'd like to see change. Mm -hmm. And so we sat down, uh, over, over a couple beers. Uh, what is that over two years ago now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, and I like plopped this binder in front of Rachel and was like, this is like my research. These are my ideas. Like, this is what I think we could build. And then Rachel started like coming up with more ideas and things I hadn't even thought of. So, and I remember being like nervous to meet up with Rachel. Cause I'm like, we're not even really like friends like that, but whatever. <laughs> and now Rachel is one of my absolute best friends. And I'm so grateful for consensual that like, even if poof, you know, even if something were to happen and we were never be able to like make a season three, you know, or if now I know I have like a friend for life in Rachel and I'm like, Oh my God, I wish I could tell freshman year Becca that she finally got to be <laughs> friends with Rachel. She'd be so stoked. Oh my God. So sweet. I'm always so flattered. This is my favorite story that Becca tells. <laughs> you, you didn't know. Um, I love hearing about how great I am. <laughs> but truthfully, yeah, in college, my priorities were all sorts of effed up and I missed out on an opportunity to become friends with Becca earlier. And that is a huge regret of mine. And now that we are friends and we we kind of have this hive mind that we share. It's just, it feels like fate. It feels like kismet and that we deserve this friendship. <laughs> yeah, we did. We earned this. Yeah, we did. We earned it. I love this. I would tell you like this pandemic has taught me how to make friends like online, like mm -hmm. how to introduce myself, how to introduce myself in a conversation. But like, I want to just be your friend. <laughs> you yes. <know>? Yeah, <laughs> like, just like anyone. up front. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it's like, I need connection, you know, and like, we have things to like, I see you on social media, like, even just a conversation with Tui, I'm 
like, oh, you know, like I can connect with you. Like I can see right? you. we're in the same sphere, <laughs> you know? Right. That's, yeah. I have a friend and romance honestly has given me and specifically consensual has given me kind of some, some unexpected friends because, um, this woman, Ella Dawson is her name and she is absolutely, oh my God, she's so cool. She, um, mm-hmm. She had a viral Ted talk. She used to work for Ted. Um, and she has her first, she's working with an agent right now on her first romance novel. And she calls it in terms of like books I'm looking forward to. I like, cannot wait to read Ella's book, but I connected with her cause she was working for a company that I wanted to work with, with consensual. She no longer works for that company, but now she and I are really good friends and, you know, we talk regularly and we can talk about romance and, Um, and you know, I'm going to, I'm going to beta read her book and it's right. And it's like so unexpected. She lives in New York. Like we never would have met if we weren't like, if it weren't for romance. And also if we weren't trapped in our homes, desperate for connection with somebody. (laughs) Yeah. I think it's like, I feel like in some ways like this, this year has taught me like, because I haven't seen people in a year and since February 2020. And so I realized I had to make commitment because I was like, I would go crazy. And like, so I went and I, I went and it just slid on people's DMs and I was like, oh, I think you'll be fine. You know, we can chat and, you know, and I've gotten better about like just connecting, staying connected afterwards. So, like, you know, like, see, how are you doing? How can I support you? Like in the spirit mm-hmm. of collaboration, I think it's like such a big part of that. Like, it's not like competing against each other. Like, I feel like in Romans, yes. community, it feels like we're helping each other. There's more than enough to go around, you know? Yes. And that is the sort of feminist energy that mm-hmm. I am so about. And that, you know, um, uh, Hookup State of Mind was co-written by me and Amelia J. Rose, who wrote our first season. But mm-hmm. Rachel and I were the editors for t- 10-Week Turnabout. And it's all just so collaborative, so building each other up, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats. So that sort of powerful feminist energy that I'm totally about. Yeah. Yeah. Just supporting each other. Like there's like, there's enough to go around. Like, I feel like, you know, every so often I'll hear someone's like getting salty. It's like, oh, you stole my idea. Or you stole this. And I'm like, uh, you know, like there's enough to go around. Like yeah. there's a there's shine theory, man. man. Yeah. There's always an audience. There's always someone who wants to support you, you know, so let's just support each other. Yes. <laughs> and let's mm-hmm. slide on people's DMs and become best friends. You know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I love this. So other podcasts you recommend? I think that could be a fun, you know, thing for our podcast listeners, you know? Yes. So in terms of, well, I'll say Audible Originals uh, mm-hmm. first, uh, yeah. I am just because there's one I'm particularly obsessed with, which is Call Me Maybe was. Oh my God. There's a follow-up. Yes. Oh, it's God. coming in April. It's yeah. A, it is. Oh April. my God. It's already April. Holy crap. You're right. I'm like, yeah. It's coming next month. Wait, this month. Um, yes. I'm really excited and I'm really intrigued by it because right. It's written for audio. Mm-hmm. And I also just love like I love the hero in that. Give me, give me a good beta hero. I don't, I'm no taste for alphas. Just don't, I don't like it. I don't. And I think that's another thing that in like writing romance, having to write alphas gave me such like a, like a distaste for it. I was like, this is icky. If I met a guy like this in real life, I would run the, like, this is terrible. (laughs) Yeah. We're, we're a pretty anti-alpha organization. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, no, this is not like, no girl run, run. (laughs) Um, so I do love that. I love that in terms of fiction podcasts, I will gosh. Oh man. Now I got to pick favorites. Oh, that's tough. I'll come back to that. Let's say a couple, you know? Yeah. I feel Um, like the classic is night veil. Night Vale is a classic. It absolutely is. That was the first ever fiction podcast I listened to. Um, oh yeah, that just totally opened up a whole world to me. I just feel like I, and I, I, I haven't done nearly as much research into this world as Becca has, but, um, to at that time I hadn't listened to any other fiction podcast. So it was truly seemed like the first of its kind. I don't know if historically that is true, but, um, so original and I'm, I'm a big fantasy sci-fi nerd. So I just, just gobbled it up truly. I affect, uh, it's a very short series, um, but 
there's, uh, there's a fiction podcast called mother hacker. That's about a mom who is struggling to pay the bills and she gets a job, like basically doing like phishing schemes on the phone, uh, in like a hacking organization where she like gets good at like calling people and pretending to be their bank and being like, Oh yeah, we just need the last four digits of your social security number to confirm X, Y, Z. Right. But she's doing it because she needs to like feed her family and then her kids like find out. So that's, that's a super, super good fiction (laughs) podcast. I love that one. Um, the black tapes is one that's kind of like a little spooky, Mm -hmm. um, that I really, really love, uh, highly recommend that. And then in terms of like nonfiction podcasts, uh, that are just like a little bit more conversational, anything by the McElroy brothers is just, Mm -hmm. again, just like my brother, my brother and me brings me so much joy. Las Culturistas brings me so much joy, just like goofy, goofy podcasts talking about pop culture or talking about, or just like that. It just sounds like being in a room with your friends. I love it. I love this. Oh my gosh, I love these recommendations. These yes. are great. Yeah, I've been driving into I had your podcast. I love it. And I was like, I need more fresh and podcasts, you know? Yeah. And they're like a great way to consume books because I cannot read. So I had a job back in the day, back in my temp days, uh, you know, and yeah. I basically only had like three hours worth of work. So then I read a book and that's all I did. I read oh, a what a dream. Day. It was great. It was a dream job. And so I no longer have that job. I have a more, um, requires more work, but I can listen to audiobooks at work. So okay. I've been like consuming them. Like I have a bunch of library cards and I just like go around and like just consume an audiobook. And I'm like, oh, you know, just gets in the story. And so fiction podcasts, it's like the same thing. You yeah. Know? Just mm-hmm. in the podcast form. So. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You should definitely listen to mother hacker because it's also, it's funny. And that's what I like, right. It's like, it's lighthearted and it's, and those are fun too, because like the one season there's one season, it's the whole story, Mm -hmm. um, which I love. Cause like night Vale is great, but it's so like, it just goes on and on and on and on. It's like, Oh God, I need, I need resolution. So, Mm -hmm. um, but God, I mean, yeah, I, I think, I mean, fiction podcasts got so much bigger, in, I think really just in the pandemic, because it's another way to do theater and another way to consume stories. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's really interesting to watch that market grow. And we, you know, it took us about a year's worth of work to make the first season of consensual. Um, and then just in time for it to, to come out just as this fiction podcast boom started happening, which is really interesting. We didn't do it on purpose, but worked out that way. Oh, amazing. So Becca and Rachel, tell us where we can find you online. Yes. So you can find us on Instagram at consensual pod. You can find us at, if you search consensual, exactly the way you think it would be sp- spelled, um, or hookup state of mind or 10 week turnabout on Apple podcasts, uh, Spotify, you know, pretty much wherever you get your podcasts, not everywhere, but close. Uh, <laughs> And then I am B Grizz Writes on TikTok, B E E G R I Z Writes, as in writing, um, where I talk <laughs> about I talk about ghostwriting things and just writing things in general. I love this. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having us. This has been so lovely. <laughs> this has been great. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support the podcast. For book recommendations, author interview archives, and other fun book resources and tips, please visit watchreadnextblog.com. The Watch Read Next podcast is part of the Frolic Network. To discover new shows to listen and love, please visit frolic.media slash podcast. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.